Comedy Show. Starring Lucille Ball. Co-starring Gail Gordon. I think I've got it. All right. How is this for a bank slogan? If you want to feather your nest, save with us, we'll do the rest. What do you think of that? I think it just misses. No, no, no. <laughs> well, we've got to get something short, something snappy, something attractive that people will listen to. That's right. Let's see now. Let's... Oh, I've got it. You can bank on us. <laughs> What's the rest of it? Well, that's it. Short, concise, and to the point. You can bank on us. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you put that down. I've got it down. Yeah. Do you think Mr. Cheever will like it? I don't care whether Mr. Cheever likes it or not. It's a good slogan. If Mr. Cheever doesn't like it, he's a fool. Believe me, a Tony? fool. Oh, hello, Mr. Fool. Hello, Mr. Cheever. <laughs> Tony, I hope that you've come up with a suitable slogan. Oh, yes, sir, I have. Yes, sir, Mrs. Carmichael, read it back. I hope it's a good one. <laughs> Three of the other vice presidents came up with the same corny slogan. Oh, what was that, sir? You can bank on us. <laughs> Imagine coming up with a slogan like that. You can bank on us. Yeah, well, it is rather unimaginative, sir. Yeah. It's worse than that. It's positively idiotic. Harmony, <laughs> what is your slogan? Oh, uh, well, um, I... Read it to me, Mrs. Carmichael. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh... Oh, she takes so long to read her shorthand. Well, come on, Mooney. It's your slogan. Can't you remember it? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. I, I can... Uh, no, it's, it's coming back to me now. Uh, we must be a good bank. Your baker... Puts his dough here. <laughs> Your baker puts his dough. Well, well that, that that isn't all of it, sir. The, the entire slogan goes: Your baker puts his dough here, so he has it when he needs it. <laughs> don't, don't you get it, sir? Baker, dough, needs. You've got to be kidding. May I say something, sir? No. Yes. Certainly. <laughs> well, uh, sir, I don't think a slogan is enough to bring in new business. What our bank needs is an advertising gimmick. You know, for instance, if we could get the account of someone who is unique and different, someone who, that, that no other bank could get, like maybe the Queen of England or, or the King of Thailand or, or Mickey Mouse. Mickey Mouse? Yes, if we had Mickey Mouse, then we could have a great slogan. Bank with us, put your money where your mouse is. <laughs> That is the worst thing I have ever heard. I like that idea, Mrs. Carmichael, but who can we find that is unique and different? Uh, well, uh, how about the Maharaja of Cooch Uh, how about the Maharaja of Beverly Hills? Who? Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Yeah, everybody knows that Jack Benny doesn't trust banks and keeps all of his money in his own home. If we could get his business, we could get everybody else's business. If we could get Jack Benny's business, we wouldn't need anybody else. <laughs> That's a splendid idea, Mrs. Carmichael. Thank you. Yes, I must send someone over to see Mr. Benny immediately. Yes, sir, and I think that someone should be one of our more elegant and capable men. <laughs> I think that someone should be a young, intelligent, attractive woman. Well, where are we going to find one? <laughs> I think I could get Mr. Benny's account. Oh, forget it, Mrs. Carmichael. No, wait a minute, Mooney. How would you go about it? Uh, well, sir, I, I would be very subtle. I'd 
flatter him, you know, play up to him. And I wouldn't even mention the bank until the opportune moment. You mean you would intend to trick Mr. Benny? You would connive and lie to him? Well, no. Why not, if it'll get the account? <laughs> Go ahead! Oh! Oh, all right! Be right back, Yasha. Mr. Benny? Lady, if you're selling Girl Scout cookies, I'm the one who makes them. Oh, no, sir, I'm not. I wanted to see you about something personal. Oh, about something personal? Yes. Oh, oh, well, come right in. Thank come you. Right in. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> now, uh, what can I do for you, Miss... Uh, Miss... Uh, Carmichael. Oh, Carmichael. Yes. I used to have a polar bear by that name. You know? Oh, a polar bear. Was its first name Lucy? No. <laughs> well, you can call me Lucy. I can? Mm -hmm. Well, you can call me Jackie. <laughs> now. Yes. Now, uh, what, uh, what can I do for you, Lucy? Well, uh, Mr. Benny, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know where I can find your violin teacher. Uh, so would a lot of other people. <laughs> now, what do you want him for? Well, I want my nephew to take violin lessons, and I want the finest teacher available. Oh. And I thought that any man who taught a virtuoso like you must be the best teacher in the world. Isn't that true? Well, yes. Yes. Now, <laughs> let me think. Unfortunately, my very first violin teacher isn't available. Oh, he passed away? No, he ran away. <laughs> Domestic trouble. Oh. But my present teacher is Monsieur LeBlanc. Monsieur LeBlanc, do you uh, know his address, Mr. Benny? Yeah, I think it's 900 Valley Road. 900. And he's a great violin teacher. He's been with me 20 years. And he has wonderful qualifications. Oh? He's tone deaf and hungry. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Benny. You've been very helpful. <laughs> Gee, Mr. Benny, all these mementos and awards and trophies... You certainly have had a wonderful life. Yes, yes, I have. What's this? Oh, uh, that's a picture of me when I was in the Navy. Oh, I didn't know you were in the Navy. Was it the Korean War? <laughs> Bless you. Oh, dear, all these wonderful pictures. Oh, there's one of Rochester. That's right. Oh, look at... Oh, and two presidents. My. Oh, there's a great picture of Bob Hope. Yes, he's one of my fans. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> Who are all these people? Oh, uh, this is the cast of my old television show. Oh, oh, they were all so talented. Do you still see any of them? Well, occasionally I run into Dennis Day... And once in a while, I trip over Phil Harris. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Can I offer you a drink? Uh, a soft drink. Oh, a soft drink. Yes. Uh, well, do you have any root beer or cola? Well, yes. Which would you like? Oh, it doesn't make any difference. That's true. They cost me about the same. <laughs> Will you answer that, please? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Benny. Mr. Benny's residence? Uh, yes, but he's busy at the moment. Oh, all right, I'll tell him. Thank you. Who was it? Uh, it was your dentist. Any message? 
Uh, yes, he said they're ready and you can pick them up tomorrow. <laughs> well, good. I'm glad I have a dinner date. <laughs> there you are. Thank you. Gee, Mr. Benny, I envy you. You've spent your life in such an exciting business. It makes my job seem so drab. Why? What do you do? Oh, I work in a bank. That's drab? <laughs> well, it doesn't pay very much. Oh, that's drab. <laughs> yes, it is. I'm just a secretary, and the only way I can get any extra money to pay for my, my nephew's violin lessons is by bringing in new accounts for the bank. Oh. And uh, I feel that if my nephew doesn't take violin lessons, that the world may be deprived of a second Jack Benny. <laughs> the world doesn't need a second Jack Benny. <laughs> The first one ain't gonna leave. You know, Mr. Benny, it's very difficult landing new accounts. It seems that everybody in Beverly Hills has their money in banks. Oh, not everybody. What do you mean? Well, I don't have my money in a bank. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, why don't you keep your money in a bank? Well, I probably would if I could find one that would give me the same security as I have in my home. Oh. You see, I have a burglar-proof vault right here in my house. Is that so? Well, now, I'm sure that our bank could supply a vault that's just as safe as yours. <laughs> I doubt it. Well, if we could, would you, uh, would you become one of my new accounts? Well... I... Oh, it would help me so much, Mr. Benny. It would? I would be so grateful. How grateful? <laughs> Pretty grateful. <laughs> now, if you would give me a chance to get your account, then maybe we could go out on a date. We could go to dinner. How about it? Well, that depends. Where are you planning to take me? <laughs> oh, well... Anywhere you want. Well, good, good. Oh, well, then you'll give me a chance to get your account? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll show you my vault. And if your bank can build a better one, you've got my account. Oh, thank you, Mr. Benny. Now, right this way. Pretty deep. You better wear this. <laughs> What's that? You're lucky. You're just in time to see the changing of the guard. <laughs> Well, the workman finally finished the new vault. Good. Mr. Benny should be here any minute. Oh, you know, the bank has gone to great expense to build that vault. The sand hogs have been working day and night. If I'd known it was going to be so expensive, I never would have approved of it. We have just got to get Mr. Benny's account. Now, don't worry. We will. Besides, it was my idea. I will take the responsibility. If it doesn't work, you can fire me. <laughs> Oh, I almost wish it wouldn't work. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. If it doesn't work, we'd both get fired. Yes. Uh, well, now, it will work if they followed my instructions. Uh, Did they dig it deep enough? Well, it's 300 feet deep. <laughs> now, how deep was Mr. Benny's vault? Well, I'm not sure, but before I was halfway down, I got the bends. <laughs> it's very deep. Oh. Excuse me. Yeah. Mr. Mooney's office. Oh, yes, Gladys, send him right in. Mr. Benny is on his way in. Good, good. I just hope our little scheme works, because if it doesn't, we're... Oh, Mr. Benny. Oh, yeah. It's so good to see you here. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like you to meet my...
my boss, Mr. Theodore Mooney. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Great pleasure. Thanks. Well, you're just in time to see the new vault. And if you approve, and I'm sure you will, we'll need a little information about you. So I'd like to ask a few questions, if I may. It'll save time later on. All right. Oh, all righty. Good, good, good. Now, if you sit over here, Mrs. Carmack, yeah, we'll right my the information Thank for you. Thank there you. we are, sir. <coughs> now, your, uh, your full name, Mr. Benny? Mr. Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> your father's name? Mortimer. Mortimer. <laughs> your mother's maiden name? J.P. Morgan. <laughs> J.P. Morgan? Judith Priscilla. Uh, your uh, social security number? One. Do you have any scars or identifying marks? Well... <laughs> yes, I... I have a, a tap, too. Done many years ago. <laughs> what does it say? Well. <laughs> J E L L O. <laughs> I had to, in those days, sponsors were hard to get. <laughs> oh, well, I think that's all the information we need, Mr. Benny. Yes, now, Mr. Benny, you're going to see your vault. Then, mm -hmm. well, I, uh, I hope you're going to show it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, sir, I am. Well, don't you think that I should go along and... Be sort of a chaperone? A chaperone? I can't see any harm in being alone with Mr. Benny. Oh, I wish you could. <laughs> oh, here we are. Uh, Mr. Benny, yeah. walk this way. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> well, here you are, Mr. Benny. Hey, it doesn't look bad. How deep are we? We're 300 feet down. Well, that might be safe. It's also smog free. <laughs> well... Ah, don't step down there. Why not? Landmines blow you to bits. <laughs> See, it's not going to be easy to get to your vault. Follow me. Now, Mr. Benny, nobody can get past this. Now, why not? Well, look what happens when I break the electric beam. Now, you see, Mr. Benny, nobody will ever be able to get to your money. Including me. <laughs> Not that I ever intend to take any out, you know, but I like to go in and fondle it once in a while. Well, sir, we have taken care of that. Uh, we have a switch that disconnects the guillotine. Yeah. There it is. You can proceed now. Ladies first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, I'd like to show you something very special. This is guaranteed safeguard against burglars. That? Yeah. This is a wooden door. A, a, a termite could get through it. Well, it's a decoy. A decoy? Yeah, stand up against it and see what happens.
That's cute. <laughs> cute? Weren't you frightened of them? When you've been with Custer, nothing frightened. <laughs> Oh, the nerve of them. You know what they wanted? Yeah, time and a half for overtime. That's right. How did you know? I'm their agent. <laughs> Oh. Frankly, if you expect me to keep my money here, you have to make a ball safer than this. Oh, well, now, Mr. Benny, let's keep going. The best is yet to come. I hope so. Now, this water, right here, this water will stop anybody. Well, how deep is it? Is About it very a foot deep? and a half. Well, how will that stop a crook from wading across? May I show you? Yeah. What happened? Piranha fish. <laughs> Piranha fish? God, what a picnic they'd have with Jackie Gleason. <laughs> you know, by the time he could say, and away we go, he'd be gone. That's right. We can guarantee that no crook will be able to get past this. Oh, yeah? All a crook has to do is take that door off its hinges and use it for a bridge. It's a very clever idea. Why don't you try that? All right. <laughs> Hi, Irving. <laughs> Irving? His mother works for me. Oh, boy. Now, how am I going to get to the vault? Well, I'll show you, Mr. Benny. Now, follow me. Come on. There. Hey, that's clever. It's rocks in the water. They're not rocks, Mr. Benny. They're snapping turtles. Okay, fellas, beat it. <laughs> Now, there is your vault door, and I defy any crook to get it open. But supposing some crook is smart enough to get it open, then all my money would be stolen. Yeah, but they have to get to the vault first. Well, what's going to stop them? Well, follow me, sir, and I will show you. May I have your hand? to get all your money. Send three. Oh. oh, boy, this quicksand is the cleverest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Glad you like it. You know, I think it's even better than your shark-filled moat. And cheaper. You don't have to feed them. That's true. <laughs> then it's a deal. It is a deal. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs>